Well, I think it's because people just think it's not going to turn into a, a, an all-out uh, a war. And the problem with that, and I think uh, the complacency, there's too much complacency out there, uh, is that this thing, especially with China, can be drawn out a lot longer than it was with some of these other uh, countries, whether it be with Europe uh, or with Mexico, where we already have something, you know, an agreement in principle, and, of course, Canada. I mean, the, the thing is, the political will for the president is much stronger there because people on both sides of the aisle, whether they be in Washington, D.C., or on Wall Street, agree that, ch that ch uh, China has been cheating for a long time and something needs to be done. So he can be more firm in, in for uh, both in what he does and how long it takes him to resolve the situation. Uh, so uh, so on their, that side of the equation, the people are, are, are much more strident. And on, on China, of course, uh, they don't have to worry about being elected. They're a communist country. They can kind of force their people to you know, withstand the economic pain. So I think this issue is going to last, even though I don't think it's going to turn to an all-out full-blown trade war, it can still be something that's damaging to uh, uh, both economies, and, and therefore the, the uh, markets are a little too complacent, in my opinion. And nobody is saying the tariffs don't matter. In fact, tomorrow we're going to be live in Huntsville, Alabama, at a major manufacturer that is getting pinched a bit by, the, by some of the tariffs that are already in place on steel and aluminum. There is a real-world impact here, Matt, but from a macro perspective, are the numbers still too small? 10% of $200 billion is, is $20 billion. That's not a whole lot. Are the numbers still too small to shake and rattle these equity markets, which are being, being buffeted by or being pushed, I guess, by a very strong overall U.S. economy? Well, I, I, I think they can because, it, again, it, it, people are too, get too much with the extremes. You know, we are talking last week about the fall of Lehman Brothers. We don't have to worry because we, we've put in things in place that won't, we don't have to worry about another major banking crisis. That doesn't mean that the bank is, can't, can't have some problems along the way. And the same thing here, that, you know, especially when, when people, when there's so much uncertainty involved, uh, companies uh, start to pull back. Right now, we have an incredibly strong economy. People question how much stronger that can actually get. Same with earnings growth. How much stronger can that get, actually get? So things only have to slow down a little bit with the stock market at an elevated level uh, that would be enough to, to cause the stock market to come down. Again, I'm not saying that's going to cause a a major bear market, uh, but it could cause some of the growth. And, and it's funny how people have been moving into more defensive groups in the last four or five, six months have actually been able to outperform. And I think that's something people should cons consider uh, continuing doing.